flight, killing one person. But now we're learning more about the other passengers who jumped into action to try to save that woman's life. That is Jennifer Reardon, and she died in it. Uh, one of those tried to help her, our next guest, who performed CPR for more than 20 minutes. Retired registered school nurse Peggy Phillips joins us right now from Dallas. Peggy, good morning to you. Good morning. Let's go back a couple of days when this all happened. As soon as it blew, what'd you feel? Um, there was a, a very loud noise and uh, the plane started vibrating and shuddering and it was very, very loud. And um, the oxygen masks drop out of the compartment and we, um, I think everyone knew that something really bad had happened. We weren't sure exactly what at that time. Um, the plane started uh, depressurizing and, right. and basically going down. I mean, sure. it, was, it was definitely uh, losing altitude. Um, but, you know, uh, interestingly enough, the, the, the passengers were very calm um, for the most part. Right. And my feeling was, uh, initial feeling was, well, um, Okay, I don't have any control over this situation. Yeah. This is definitely not in my hands. Right. Um, I had a real sense of calm about me, which, uh, looking back, surprises me. Um, but I, that's just how it was. Yeah. I wasn't panicked. I wasn't um, hysterical. I, I truly believe that um, if it was going, if it was meant to for us to sure. land safely, we would. And if it wasn't, we. That was just how it's going to be. Absolutely. I mean, you're just trusting the, the pilot who, as it turns out, was a great hero. Tammy Jo Schultz, a, a naval aviator, was steering the plane. The reason you were in a dive was because she was trying to get down to the lower uh, elevation altitude so that because you needed the oxygen. And that's a picture right. of the pilot. But we just showed the uh, the the window right there that sitting at that seat was Jennifer Reardon. I know at yes. one point they asked, is there anybody here who is an EMT? And there was a firefighter and an EMT in her row, apparently. But then you got up. Why? Um, actually, the EMT was not in her row. He okay. was uh, sitting on the other side of the plane, uh, slightly in front of me, All right. several rows in front of me. And um, he, he went back immediately when he discovered that you know there was something going on behind us. Right. Um, I stayed in my seat and turned around to kind of see what was happening, um, but there was a lot of there was a lot of activity back there. Sure. And um, about two seconds after that, they said, "Does anyone know CPR?" I took off my mask, I took off my seatbelt, and I right. went to help Andrew, who was the EMT, right. um, and we did CPR for uh, well until the plane landed. Yeah. I know there have been a lot of stories about uh, what had happened to this woman, and I know you don't want to get too graphic. So how would you describe the condition you found her in? Um, I didn't know at the time that the window had blown, so I did not know what, what I was going to see when I walked back there. Um, I, I will say that um, her injuries were substantial. Um, there was a lot of trauma. Yeah. Um, to her head and her neck and her, uh, her upper right. torso. Um, and that's already come out, I believe, yeah. from the coroner. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't know. And so, uh, you know, you just, at that point, you don't think about it anymore. You, you look sure. at it, you assess the scene. And Andrew was already giving compressions. And I told him that I was a registered nurse and that I would assist him. And we traded right. out. Um, I attempted to establish an airway. Uh, was. I didn't feel like I ever got an airway established very well. There was no pulse. Right. And, um, but we continued to exchange uh, um, positions to give compressions. Sure. I, I've heard accounts that uh, apparently the only thing that kept the woman in the plane was the fact that her seatbelt was still on. And that's why you were able to then uh, try to save her life, but it doesn't sound like that was a, a possibility given her extensive injuries. Uh, but what what is it about a person? It, OK, so Peggy, I know you felt when you were going down that this was it. This could be it. The, the, the master going down, this could be it. And yet when you heard them say, anybody know a CPR, you took your mask off and you went back to help. Where does that come from? Um, that comes from being a registered nurse for over 20 years, and uh, that's just what we do. That's that's 
just in our, it's just, it's just part of who we are. Um, you know that anytime you step on a plane, anytime you're out in public, anything can happen at any given time. And it's almost like you're always on call in right. your mind, you know, um, and you're always going to be ready to step in and lend assistance. And, and that's just what uh, medical personnel do. RNs do that on a, a daily basis. Right. Um, and you just, I, it was almost, I was almost relieved to have something to do that would, that I knew I was in control of. I right. know how to do CPR. I can help. Sure. And that was, that was a good feeling for me to know that I could at least attempt to help. Yeah. Well, I, you know, they were lucky to have you on the plane. Um, Peggy Phillips, thank you very much for joining us and telling us your story. You are very welcome. Thank you.